Welcome back everybody to the DLG. My name is Skip. We're on our way up to the little mining town of Jerome. Yes, we're going to make it this time. And we're going to visit the Gold King Mine. It's a fascinating place. I think we're going to have a lot of really good adventures up there. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. So here we are in the little historic mining town of Jerome. Jerome was established around 1835. It was a little mining town. They mined gold and copper until around uh, 1930. And in 1930, this little town that boasted the highest population of any township in Arizona. Actually, it had the big, the most population of any city in Arizona. Dropped from 16,000 people all the way down to about 11. And so it stood as a ghost town for many, many years. And then around 1950, the state of Arizona came in and said, anybody that wants to move into any of these ab abandoned buildings, maintain those buildings the property belongs to you as long as you pay the property taxes. So around 1960, this whole area up here became a huge hippie colony. Until around 1973, when the whole town got busted for marijuana, including the mayor. And a lot of those people had some legal problems. They started selling off a lot of these properties. And it became what it is today, which is a little art community. It's still a really cool place, a lot of historic buildings. But the, we're not here today to see uh, the little town of Jerome. We're here to see the Gold King Mine. Check out this cool little teardrop camper. That's probably around the 30s or 40s era right there. Ooh, nice cold Pepsi-Cola. Where I go, I seem to run into this guy. Howdy, partner. So here we are inside the little town. And unfortunately, we're not supposed to film inside the uh, gift shop. And that's for insurance reasons. Um, so we're going to honor that. Uh, but he has an amazing collection of cars old ones as you can see one of the things that uh, that they boast is the largest continually operating hit and miss motor and this is the old sawmill it's still in operation today as you can see love that pop there you go But if you're a photographer, you could probably spend hours in here just taking photographs of some of these old cars and equipment. Apparently this is set up as an old gas station. When a day like today, I could sure use a cold drink. It's like an old filling station. Buildings like this you would find all along Route 66. But from what I'm told, a lot of these buildings were once part of the little town of Jerome. And before they were demolished, they were just moved out here. Mater, no, Mater, no, Mater. This is what the pioneer lifestyle used to be. Doesn't really look half bad if you ask me. The 
Pioneer Life. So I ran into Don here, and Don is uh, the owner of this property, and he kind of put this all together. So how'd this come to be, Don? Well, I, I grew up in southeast Iowa, and I helped my mom move to Arizona, and then I stayed stayed in Arizona over at Lake Havasin, and after about 15 years, it just got too hot for me, working in the sand and that heat over there. So I started driving around my motorhome looking for a better spot, and I found... I'd been to Jerome a couple of times before, so it kind of drew me to here, to Jerome. And then I heard, uh, then I started hearing about a third road coming into Jerome besides 89A this way and 89A that way. And it ended up being the Perkinsville Road. And then, uh, so I came past the other end of it anyway, whenever I came over here to look for a property. So I just, next time I just came down to Perkinsville Road. Been down that way before. And saw this place, yeah. I'm right up there on the hill. And then came down and pulled in here, and at that time there was a stream running through here. It was a lot more, you know, we're a lot drier now than we used to be than 30 used to years be. ago. Now, I understand that this used to be a, a little uh, suburb of Jerome at it one was point. A suburb of Jerome at one time. Now, these buildings were here? No, the, the only one that was here is the one up on the hill right up there, the boarding house. The, the big one up there, so I, yeah. I built the other ones, I either build them or moved them here. Right. They're big, and I and painted with black motor oil, and they and they build them. So we're up here again with Bob. He can start up this old race car, 1938 Studebaker. Uh, he's raced this car all over the country. Is that a flathead 12? Flathead 8, straight 8. F straight 8. Yeah, yeah there's nothing, nothing else anywhere of 1928 vintage that'll arrive like this one. So this is 1928? 1928. Yeah, I just said 1938. So it's a 1928. 28 Studebaker Indy car. That's wow. a real one. That's worth over a million. Let's see here if we get closer to 5 in this picture. The one in the middle, the green one, number 37. It belongs to a friend of mine who lives in New Hampshire. Wow. Robert Valpy, he owns the real one. So what is this? This is a reproduction? Yeah, I, I just reproduced it. Wow. I built it from pieces and parts. And the engines, I never had the engine apart. I've had the head off once. Just put it back on. Incredible. I'm the only one in the vintage class that races on wooden spoke wheels. Uh huh. And I'm the only one that, that starts their car with a crank. With a crank. You still race it? I, I race it. I got a race coming up in September, maybe. Where's that going to be? Ca Canyon Raceway. Phoenix. But all the other tracks, they've all moved away and gone, gone away. But how can we get people moving in here from? California and New York, millionaires, and they don't like any noise on Saturday night. So, so they move in close close enough to a racetrack that they can hear it, and then they complain about it. It's another one of his race cars. So this building that we're looking at right here one of the original buildings that was here and this was actually an old boarding house now depending on who you talk to uh, this was a boarding house because it has six bedrooms up on top uh, but also it was used as a brothel it's pretty dilapidated right now so they don't allow people to go inside but I just think that it's really cool thought you guys would like to get a look at it Five 
five cents to use the toity. Hey, I'm on the pot. Stop it. Are you guys good or bad? So Don really liked Dodges and Studebakers. Here's an interesting bit of history right here. So right there is the original emblem for Dodge. And if you'll notice, there's a Jewish star right there. Uh, the Dodge brothers used to work for Henry Ford. And Henry Ford was kind of a renowned racist. And he didn't like the Dodge brothers. So the Dodge brothers went out into direct competition with them. And uh, they put that Jewish star on the front of their originals. Uh, as kind of an F.U. to uh, good old Henry Ford. So this is an old shell tanker truck. They used to deliver gasoline to the shell stations in this. But this is the thing that's pretty fascinating. Uh, these were long haul truckers back in those days. And at the end of a long day, he would pull into a truck stop. And this is where you'd bed down for the night. Back of these things was set up like a little RV. Had a place where the driver could get inside Climb up into the back here and have a good night's sleep. Little area for pots, pans, cooking utensils, clothing, that type of thing. Pretty amazing. So instead of having the sleeper cab at the front, they put them at the back. So this is what it was all about, folks. This right here is one of the original mine shafts that they dug. And they dug it by hand, about 1,300 feet deep. And they never found what they were mining for, and that was copper. But what they did find was gold. So I'm up here at the Gold King Mine, and look who I run into. This gentleman's name is Terry. He was with the Grassroots out in, uh, out in California and all over the place. Uh, he now lives over in the Prescott area, and they do a lot of uh, live performances out here still. Um, so uh, what brought you out to Prescott? Uh, a friend of mine who lives in Sedona. Really? Said, you better go check that out. You'd probably like it. And mm -hmm. I did. And you did. So thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Come down and see us. <laughs> okay, I will. Thursday night, the Haciampa. Thursday night, the Haciampa in Prescott. Really enjoy that. Yeah, I bet she will. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye now. The old blacksmith shop. Well, that just about does it for the old Gold King Mine. Be sure and like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Happy trails, everyone.